yet another edition on Artist Talk, and this time I'm in the company of somebody who's not just defined a certain genre of music in the city, but I would say in the country and taken India across the world with many of things they've done. Nolan Lewis from Cryptos, what a pleasure. What a pleasure to have you have missed me. Thank you so much for coming back. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I mean, I've seen you walk by. I've seen you like, you know, as a face. I've heard you as a name. And uh, from my childhood to my adult years today, uh, it's such a pleasure to just, you know, just mention your name and sit with you the same breath and didn't even talk to you. To know that you were part of uh, a great, I uh, would say, see the music at one point in time. And I think you're still there. We're going to discuss about how music has transitioned over the years. 25 years of Cryptos, bro. It doesn't come so easy. It must have been something or the other. So congratulations on that, firstly. Thank you so much. But it, I know it's 25 years. It seems like a long time, but it just doesn't feel that way. <laughs> I know it's, it's almost like we started the band maybe five years ago. It still feels like that. And of course, all the changes that we had, we're, we're going to talk about all of that, but really it does feel like, you know, just like a wind in the, that just passed by like five, 25 years, just like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, how, I don't know why it feels that way, but you know, sometimes you're, I, I guess it's because we, we love what we do so much, so it doesn't really feel like 25 years is a lot. It's, it's, uh. <laughs> You wake up every day and you're just like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> we're still in a band. <laughs> Thankful for just being yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 98 is when you started and you had a four-member band initially back then. Now, when you started, uh, from my understanding, I know the bands that inspired you, but from your point of view, who do you, who are the bands that really put you on to getting into the, you know, the kind of genre that you were playing? Uh, it's, it's, you know, from day one, it's always been three bands, I would say, uh, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden. I mean, that's that's pretty much our foundation. Uh, that's what we all grew up on, and uh, that's influenced our music right from the start. And uh, of course, when we started out, we were listening to a lot of other music as well. So you you know you'll hear a lot of thrash elements, some um, maybe a little bit of death metal here and there, uh -huh. doom also, because we had all those kinds of influences like you know uh, uh, Metallica, Slayer, Creator. And then you had like Paradise Lost and uh, Anathema and we, you know, even some bands like um, we, we took inspiration from literally anything back then. But over the last few years, I, I would say over the last eight or nine, nine years, you know, we really stripped down our sound. So, you know, it's it's pretty much uh, straight out of the 80s. The, the stuff we grew up on, that's the kind of music we we stripped it down to, and the only extreme thing left in our music is probably my vocals, which are okay. Because I can't sing properly, so I, <laughs> so I, so I got to get it. I don't know why you're being so modest. I mean, if you say that you can't sing it, sing properly, I wonder what a lot of vocalists would say. You know what they do. But of course, uh, what you do is different from a lot of vocalists out there in different genres of bands. But you were not the vocalist of the band like at the beginning because uh, you had two band members who had to leave. Now, this is a part and part of the game of this industry where you have uh, band members come and go. And sometimes people do change the sound of the band. Yeah. Has it ever been a thought of yours that you had to? Because it's not easy to get the kind of guys or right. you know uh, artists who are inclined towards your choice of music. Um, so that's the thing. You know, we've always uh, like whoever's come into the band, whoever's left, whoever's come in. Everyone who's been in this band has always been on the same wavelength as far as you know musical direction is concerned. So that's never been a problem. It's it's always like. Uh, Anytime someone comes into the band, they know what they're getting into. And, you know, we, we also have a talk with them before they get into the band. And we see if, we, you know, musically we are, yeah. we, are, we are the right fit and things like that. And then it just works out, you know. It's it's an un, unspoken thing, you know. When, you, when you're on the same page as somebody, you don't have to discuss things. Or, you know, you just start playing, you just start composing and it all fits. I, I don't know if I'm actually talking to the Nolan Lewis I've seen on stage. <laughs> because you sound so calm and poised at this point in time. But on stage, you're a beast, bro. <laughs> like, it's it's worlds apart, like what I'm talking to right now and what I see on stage. And for 25 years, you've been doing this. I mean, I don't know how you do this, man. Like, that energy on stage, some people call it throating, but I still call it singing in a way. And 
three albums already and now the fourth album i think this one no this is going to be our seventh seventh album, album. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this is the silver jubilee of all yeah. and you don't see bands you know lasting this long but like they say this is a lifetime in itself yeah. now we've known of the old albums like spiral ascent i i'm not able to pronounce their names because i think a little german influence is there <laughs> yeah. uh, the second one was the arc of gemini arc of gemini and, and then, then there was of apollyon Apollyon. Yeah. I keep thinking uh, Apollyon, 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 Apollyon. <laughs> it sounds like when you know on beat in the head, but yeah, a lot uh, of people don't get. <laughs> get that. <laughs> and now the seventh album, bro. Yeah. Like this, of course, with two different, uh, two new changes into the whole band. What does this sound like? Is is it going to be the same Cryptos back in the day, or is it going to be something new? Um, actually, uh, around Burn Up the Night, our fourth album. That's when we kind of uh, changed a bit. I wouldn't say changed. We sort of stripped down our sound. Uh, so that's that's when I think we actually really found our sound, our real sound. Okay. Our our crypto sound, you know. So from Burn of the Night, continuing on to Afterburner, and then Force of Danger, which was the last album. So the new album is going to be pretty much on the same lines. Uh, I mean, that's our sound. That's the sound we are comfortable with. It's you know, eighties metal, melodic, lot of twin leads, a uh, lot of ripping solos and. It already sounds exactly like I'm. <laughs> I mean, I we should be there though. But only one thing that I want to ask: like you guys have been in this thing for so long, but for you also to come to a point at here now and say this is what our sound, this is what defines us. Does it usually happen, or you know, it something like this take a lot of time? It it did take us quite quite some time. I mean, from, since we started the band in '98, I would say until maybe 2000 and. Twelve or thirteen, we were still working on our sound. We weren't actually sure what we, what we sound like, you know, as a band. We were getting close, but it was still, uh, it was still a bit far away. Uh -huh. I, I think only around two thousand thirteen or fourteen or so. That's when we, you know, we we're like finally we sound like ourselves. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's been quite a while that you know yeah, you yeah. you figured what your sound yeah. is like, but uh, when you started the band, <laughs> okay, I'm just curious to understand how do you put these. Pieces together and said, "This is the band," because they could. I mean, of course, in college, whatever. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah. you would have yeah, started. College, yeah. It would have been like, okay, uh, this this is a talented guitar. That's a talented drummer. I'm, uh, you know, I can play the guitar. Whatever. There's a vocalist. You choose whatever. You put a band together. But how was it for you? Uh, in our case, it was a bit. It was kind of funny actually, because uh, uh, the band was started by me and Ganesh. Ganesh was as our bass player. So we were college mates. Uh, we. I think you should mention the college. Some people who yeah, are watching will be like both from the Saint Joseph's College of Commerce. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joseph's right. Joseph's right. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we 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 were classmates, and you know we decided to. He was already in a band, um, and he asked me to try out. I I played with them for like a couple of months, but then that band broke up, and then you know the two of us decided to start our own band. Ah, huh. but we couldn't find a drummer. Uh, so he put out he put an ad in the Rock Street Journal. Okay. Uh, back then, and uh, we a uh, drummer from Assam. His name was Chinglen. He replied to the ad after six months. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we were like, cool, yeah, let's do it. Uh, so three of us started the band. That was okay. the first incarnation of the band. And back then, man, we didn't we weren't taking any of this seriously. You know, we hmm. were just like, let's jam, let's see how it goes. But where were you guys uh, jamming back in the day? Like if you practice, uh, actually, oh, back then we didn't really have a set place, you know. Yeah, like there, were, like, there weren't it, many jam yeah, rooms. It's, like, it's not like nowadays, you yeah. know. Like you can actually rent out a jam room and things. Like back then you had to like find some place. Huh. So <laughs> we used to like find some empty rooms somewhere. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, like uh, I think our first practice place was. Uh, it was. It was it was just in Banaswari. It was the shed type place in the middle of nowhere. I mean, when you say ninety eight and you say yeah. Banaswari, yeah. it is middle of nowhere. It was. <laughs> it was like, there was literally <laughs> nothing around. There's like one tree and you know <laughs> a dog somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just this um, this rough construction room type shed type thing, and huh. us and a couple of other bands used to jam over there. I think a lot of people can you know really try and paint a picture of Banaswari back yeah. in the day when random garage with a dog by. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. It, it But how do you travel? Your own vehicles or yeah, I mean, bus, we auto? Yeah, we had bikes and stuff. So okay. Yeah, we used to. Lucky yeah, fellows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, but it was it was tough because. We, Back then, you know, the the power cuts were insane. Like you know, power yeah, cuts yeah, 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 like yeah. six, seven hours a day. 
Oh, was that too long? I don't remember. They yeah. used to go off. Yeah, like especially during uh, in Baneswari and stuff. Because I mean, it's the middle of nowhere. So uh. what do they need power for? <laughs> <laughs> Point. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it was literally like that. You you plan a jam session, you land up there and there's no electricity. So we're like sitting outside for two hours waiting for the electricity to come. <laughs> I could only imagine the case yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it is like a hub on its own, right? Yeah, seriously. But uh, 98, you start off this mm. band thing and then, you know, you moved around to different parts uh, to to play, but was it in colleges that you started playing or were the pub scene also like open to the metal you were playing? No, back then, I mean, the pub scene was pretty decent earlier in the 90s. <coughs> uh, but that was way before us, before our time. Uh, that was during Millennium and ah. Lucid Dreams and all, and Vulcan Haze and all those bands. So there was there were a couple of places uh, on Church Street uh, called, uh, uh, I'm not, I can't remember the name, uh, Let's make speaker. some people run down memory lane, Lowell. <laughs> no, Lowell, come on. Let's do this. <laughs> but yeah, there were a couple of pubs back then that used to allow bands to play. But you're saying most of them were down the Church Street Lane? Yeah, a uh, couple of them were down there. I, I had never been there personally because <clears throat> I I was too young back then. No, but I'm and sure where you guys played is what I'm talking about. Uh, we, when, we, when we started out, we I think the only pub which actually started letting metal bands play was a bit later on was at Styx. Oh yeah, and uh, purple haze uh, once in a while, uh, but uh, apart from that, no pubs were actually hosting metal bands. I mean, they would play the music, but uh, now I know why. Whenever I mention to someone about you know the different pubs or clubs that you went to, they'd always uh, you know mention sticks in a certain breath yeah. and make us feel like you missed something. <laughs> And now I understand why it was what it was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was fun back then because Styx was literally the only place that played. Really, metal. it was the only place. Uh, there were a few other places, but Styx played metal like twenty four seven, like. And know, metal all, and all beer day. just go hand in hand. Yeah, it was, <laughs> and they had they had like a they had a uh, big screen where they used to play all these videos and live videos and stuff. So that was part of the charm. And the main thing is it was. On Brig- on MG Road, right? So right. Like, so it was accep- accessible to literally everybody. Right. And, uh, you know, all the metalheads in Bangalore used to just land up over there. And, you know, you meet different people. You meet old pe- friends you've never spoken to for a long time. Mm. And everyone just, you know, getting together, having a beer. It was fun. <laughs> but, you know, uh, for those of them who understand this metal scene, they know... That yeah. there's no harm, there's no uh, bad blood, there is no aggression of what yeah. sorts. But for someone who stands on the outside and watches, like, you know, some people who listen to metal, some people who are in the, uh, what do you say, in the moment of listening to metal, it looks like, you know, these guys are on something and it's yeah. knocking at each other. Uh, did you get some sort of, uh, what do you say, uh, a, a questionable uh, thought from somebody from the outside? the fuck are you guys doing? Do you look like you're on something? I mean, that's the ge- that's the general way the world views uh, metal, right? You know, it's it's uh, a bunch of cavemen just cleaning <laughs> their lungs out and making making strange noises on their instruments. That's pretty much what yeah. the outside world sees us as. And I mean, I get it because I mean, look at the way we look, <laughs> the way we look, the way we sound. I mean, that's the general impression somebody would get, right? But it's exactly the opposite, you know. Um, I can tell. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in general, all of us, we're all generally fairly, pretty soft-spoken people. You know, we, we we mind our own business. We do, you know, And I would say most of the time, we're, we're actually pretty open-minded compared to the rest of the world. You know? I definitely agree. Yeah? Definitely agree. Yeah, exactly. Uh, only in terms of music is where my question lies at this part. Is I know for a fact that, you know, today stereotypes have been broken, genres have been broken down. Yeah. People move into experimenting different kinds of music. But here is a very hardcore genre of music. And it's as simple as to someone's DNA being shaken off, you know, yeah. when it comes to uh, trying something new. Yeah. Coming from a very hard thrash, you know, just a metal background, how difficult is to break the genre? Let's even do a pop for you. Or anybody for the matter in this genre. I mean, it again, it depends on if you want to do it. Like, uh, you know, we as a band, like all of us in the band, we listen to a lot of different type of mu- types of music. We don't just listen to metal. We listen to anything from pop to 
maybe even um, you know techno <laughs> oh yeah okay. i mean if it sounds good it sounds good i mean back in the day when we were growing up we were like okay it's just got to be metal it's just got to be but no you can still be totally into metal and you can you can like whatever else you want also okay. there's no rules and stuff you know Uh, so you're saying you can even do a metal version? I'm a Barbie girl. Barbie. <laughs> I, I think it exists, but the thing is, it's not something we would do because when it comes to playing the music, uh, it's strictly metal. I mean, what we do. I mean, we listen to a lot of stuff, but as far as playing is concerned, we we just exclusively play this kind of music. You know. I understand this yeah. because I know. Uh, I've I've not saying I'm an musician in very humble opinions of mine. I know a lot of my friends who are in the indie music scene who play uh, different genres of music, and there was a time when they like when you said no, it's it's a choice if you want yeah. to move into it. Yeah. So they said okay, we're really only going to play this and this and this, <coughs> but then they made a conscious effort to move out because they said okay, we will try and open our yeah. things up. But you can't do metal and move into uh, something very regional because it's not going to be that easy. because metal has identity on its yeah. own uh, so when you say from your point of view in one sentence how would you call how would you put metal music together like how would you describe it uh, i would say it's 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 uh, how do I, that's that's pretty tough in one sentence i'll tell you why i'm asking yeah. this right uh, the reason is maybe i'm wrong as well i of course used to listen to listen to a lot of metal back in the day it was like a trans transcend from uh, <laughs> in the 98s to 2000s you were we were all like fanboying and yeah. Britney Spears and Backstreet yeah, Boys yeah, yeah. and then suddenly when Iron Maiden kicks in and yeah. then you start listening to Black Sabbath you start yeah. listening to Ronnie James Dio everything just yeah. comes in right and then we are so happy like oh wow this crypto is in Bangalore and all of that stuff but we were the rock capital of the country yeah. at one point in time but today it is not the case or are we still I, I, I are, are we, we still, still are, yeah. we still are we still are yeah that means we still have some good rock and metal heads yeah, still around the city there's there's a lot of good bands in the city plus you know most of the international acts come to bangalore it's very rare they, <laughs> they go anywhere else okay bangalore still has the that attraction uh, if you if you go around the country and you know you talk about rock and metal and stuff bangalore still has that has that reputation for being the place for all oh, right yeah yeah okay i mean I, I was always very proud about Bangalore being known as a rock capital, but over time I thought that some of that whole tag faded away, or maybe even uh, the choice of music of people in the city also faded away. I, it it I mean it's it's not as I mean, because you know back in the day, the um, among the major cities, Bangalore had the most bands, the most gigs, the most everything. Right. Uh, of course, it's diminished a, a bit since then, but still, if you look at the overall. the grand scheme of things bangalore still has way more to offer when it comes to rock and metal than any other city oh country, really yeah. i i i'm very happy to still know that yeah. you know that <laughs> bangalore still exists in terms of things right right there but bangalore has also been compared to a certain place in the north east of the country yeah right uh, when it comes to uh, metal music of course rock in its whole yeah. sense uh, how's the comparisons of sorts so the thing is in the north east the north east has, has an amazing you know rock metal culture I would say they probably had it way before anybody else in the country. Uh, I think you know bands like Postmark and uh, a couple of other bands. They started out in the early eighties. Uh, oh wow! Then. Yeah, so the northeast and they still all, exist. I, I don't think they still exist, okay. but there are a lot of bands up there. A lot of incredibly talented musicians. I would say the northeast probably has some of the most talented musicians in the entire country. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So hands down. Yeah, and uh, they've always been into rock music from. way back you know uh, whether it and it's not just rock i think even blues and jazz and stuff i think back in the day bands like mojo and the great society and you know all these bands they were like making amazing music like all the way back then uh, it's just that because of the i would say because of the geographical location and right. you know how difficult it is for them to venture out from there and for other bands and audiences to venture into that side of the country i guess that's why they've they've never really broken out that much maybe you can't say they cocoon themselves but i think it's more like being comfortable in where they are um i would say it's not uh, you know i guess it's it's more like uh, they didn't really have the means right compared to the other uh, to the other metro cities oh here we all pretty you know you can get to another metro city like in a few hours take a train right. take a flight take a bus whatever 
but you know from the northeast it's quite imagine going from the northeast to chennai it's it's a long <laughs> journey you know i mean back in the day the you couldn't afford a flight yeah. and things like that you had to like take and a train i, I don't think flights were that frequent as well yeah, it's exactly. more about trains yeah, and yeah. buses as well i mean it was tough for uh, for band like us from bangalore we used to take a bus 24 26 hours to bombay to play a gig and come back so i mean then that was, yeah that was it was grueling so i can imagine how difficult it must have been for them and just also for people who are um, metal heads in bombay yeah. what are the venues you were playing at back in the day oh back in the day raz rhino was the was was the main one okay. uh, all the bands used to play there and then you know you would have to have a lot of these college gigs and stuff i remember iit powai was the big uh, college fest iit powai is, yeah. is that uh, mood indigo yeah mood indigo okay yeah so all the i mean that was i think at one point the biggest uh, i think that that i th- Till date, it also is one of the biggest festival, uh, yeah, college festivals college across festivals. the country. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. I mean, all the bands used to congregate there, and you know, we are, we made tons of friends because we played all those gigs. You know, mm-hmm. and um, I guess a lot of bands who, uh, at, at least bands like us, you know, we kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, sharpened our skills, skills by playing all these you festivals. Know, festivals, and. Back then it wasn't easy, right? You know, you, you're playing like fifty. You're traveling like uh, an entire day in, in a train or a bus to play fifteen minutes on stage to a crowd that's just screaming for Metallica and Slayer. <laughs> <and things like. laughs> so, so it's not easy, you know. We, How? I mean, of course you would have broken into that thing for them yeah. to like you to be there. Yeah. But I'm guessing you still have some fans across uh, in Bombay. Yeah, we do. We have we have fans all over the country. It's that's the cool thing. So right? you can't say it's no more only Metallica they listen to or whatever no, no, because no. you still have fans. I mean, but there was a point until uh, until like you know the mid 2000s, uh, most of the bands in India were just playing covers. Oh really? Yeah, and uh, we were actually one of the few bands, us and a couple of other bands around the country. Uh, we actually started playing our own music. Okay. And, Initially, it didn't go down too well. <laughs> I remember we used to play like the Freedom Jams and huh. you know all that stuff back in the day, and a lo- the audience wasn't mature enough to appreciate original music because they were still hung up on you know whatever has been played out on is, your yeah, televisions exactly, and radios. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, any time a band would get on stage, I mean, just keep screaming, I "Play Made in Man, Play Slayer, Play <laughs> this." Play. And it gets tiresome after a point, you know, and and because of that, a lot of bands they succumb to that pressure and they just keep playing the same covers over and over again. That's why even back then, you in these college competitions, bands used to just play the same same covers: Highway Star, Smoke uh, and Water, whatever it is. It was a set playlist. It was a set playlist bands. because the crowd is like, "Yeah, they yeah. played my favorite song." <laughs> but we we always wanted to break out from that. Of course, we started playing covers. We started out playing covers as well. But even the covers we played when the when the it had its own touch of cryptos. And that also, but we we made it a point not to play the regular covers that everyone else was playing. You know, uh-huh. so like if everyone was playing, Paran- what makes you stand? <clears throat> yeah, if everyone was playing Paranoid or NIB, we would we would play like you know uh, the Wizard or uh-huh. uh, something like Behind the Wall of Sleep, or we'd try something like that. So, uh, but then we started writing original music somewhere in the early two thousands, and you know that's when we started moving away from cover set list to completely original music. And I remember the first time we played an all all original set list. The crowd was like, "What the hell is this?" Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they were like chucking bottle caps and lighters and in Bangalore. Boxes. Yeah, in Bangalore. And uh, do you remember the venue? <laughs> uh, this was at D Club. Uh, this is Mysore Road. Yeah, Mysore Road. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> this was one of the Freedom Jams I remember, and that was the first time we played an all all original set list. And the crowd was like, "Man, this sucks! What the hell is this?" And okay. Like, well, like, well, if you don't like it, you can you can fuck off. <laughs> 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 that didn't go down too well either. <laughs> I mean, this is something that's very uh, what do you say? It's, it's not unusual, yeah. but we uh, we get this a lot. Like that, there is a crowd that has heard some music, learned a certain kind of style. Yeah. They only want to listen to that. There is exactly. no thing about you know. Okay, let me listen to these guys. Give them. It's not about giving them. It's just let me just listen. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's not going to be the case. And maybe in time, a lot of them have changed. I kid you not, a lot of people have changed that way. And they have been a little more open to understanding independent music. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, that people like you, like artists like you, had to go through something no, like this it, back it, in the day. It uh, is what it is. I mean, it is. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it is what it is. It yeah. was kind of like, yeah. like this back in the day. But when it comes down to, uh, what do you say? When, when it comes down to uh, music today, it's not just you know take a guitar take a get a drummer you know put put this band together and get together to play music right 
it is also a lot of tech. Yeah. There's so much that goes into it, like the inventions and innovations that are there today. You can just use AI to create music. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So for you, have you ever tried your hands at something? Because y'all are old school boys yeah. <laughs> and you'll come from the true uh, essence of playing the instrument and yeah, getting yeah. the music out and bringing music from where it actually belongs. So for you, what is your thought about using AI in music and have you ever tried it? No, we've never tried it. Um, I mean, we barely, uh, you know, when it comes to using technology, it has its place, uh, but we only use it so in in certain areas uh, because now nowadays everything is computerized and stuff. So, you know, when it comes to just recording software and all that stuff, yeah, we use it. We that's as far as we go. But you know, even our recording sessions and stuff, you know, we get in the amps, we mic them up, we we do all this just like how it's how it should be done mm-hmm. in our opinion. Uh, of course, people have different opinions, different techniques, different. This is what works best for us. As far as using AI is concerned, I don't think we'll ever do that. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever. We have your own intelligence, yeah. and I think that is far better than yeah, yeah. artificial. I mean, <laughs> because then what's the point of being a musician, right? If you're going to let let a let a software do it for you. I just want to shake your hand and say such a pleasure, <laughs> such a pleasure to you know even hear that. Uh, with no means of any malice or any sort of bad blood to the others, yeah. but you know you don't really meet people today who come from the old school thought of playing an instrument and putting the music especially metal you yeah. hardly find it's mm-hmm. it's 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 very scratchy to find someone from you know that sort of a genre and for me to even be sitting and sitting in or in like just in this close proximity to a legend in this music scene no, <laughs> that by itself is like huge for me but <laughs> it's 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 really an honor and also to know that 25 years people don't last a year or two, but you guys, for 25 years, you put this yeah. together. Uh, thank you for sticking it on and thank you for, you know, keeping our hope alive in certain terms, I would say, uh, the metal genre. Keeping the hopes alive for the metal genre and still inspiring for the youngsters. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, it's, we can't do anything else, so we just keep <laughs> doing this. <laughs> but yeah, it's been awesome so far. And uh, I'm, I'm actually hoping, you know, maybe uh, somewhere down the line, because of what we've done, maybe when we hang up our boots forever, somewhere down the line, I know other other kids will be like, oh, cool, these these guys did all this back in the day. Maybe we can also pick up where they left off or something. Uh, let's let's face it. Let's be honest about it. The festivals you play, the places you put India on the map in terms of the genre that you you know hold dear to you, is not easy. It's de- like Wacken and all across Europe, Argentina, like the way you. Like, I was even wondering, how on earth did you guys get <laughs> featured in Argentina and Europe and the likes? Back in the day, when you produced a metal album here, it takes a while, but how? what happened? Tell me, please. I'm very curious to know this part of it. But see, that's the thing, you know, a lot of people don't realize that all this stuff was actually going on in, in Europe and the US, South America. Actually, it was going on in most parts of the world since the 70s and 80s. It's just that we caught on a bit too late. Okay. Uh, so, like bands in the 80s, 90s, you know, they were they were writing to each other literally by post, you know, huh. writing letters to each other, sending demos to each other, sending uh, whatever they could, uh, doing doing radio shows, independent, like just like how you are you are doing stuff, and uh, magazines were all over the place, like in the West and stuff. There were tons of magazine publications which were featuring metal bands and rock bands and things like that. So this, you know, the entire infrastructure, I would say, was already there. Right. It already existed for bands to, you know, get into and... There's already a community. There was was already already an ecosystem. There was already an ecosystem, a network, you know. It was just a question of tapping into that. Uh, Since we were... You know, coming from India back in the 90s, you didn't really have access to this network because you didn't know how... I mean, you'd, may, you'd maybe read about all these things somewhere at, at most, but you didn't really know how you got your foot through the door. So it, it really was a lot of trial and error, you know. You read about something in a magazine or somewhere, uh, somebody tells you something. Uh, like, we used to... We used to get some magazines from abroad like you know Metal Hammer and Terrorizer and all uh-huh. these magazines 
and uh, you'd see all these back then the pen pal thing was a big deal right right you know meet metalheads from around the world and okay uh, there would be a page which uh, featured like a whole bunch of people with their addresses and oh. things like that so you could write to right them and they'd to write back to you and and you know you build you build relationships like that and uh, similarly when we released our first album we went through you know things like this uh, some guy in argentina had a distro some guy in germany had a distro some guy in russia had a distro and here's our address and you reach out to us wherever you're from and things like that and we would send them you know our cds demos whatever it was and two months three months later we'd get a reply back from them saying whoa a metal band from india that's insane that's <laughs> crazy we would love to you know distribute your stuff and you start building that way so once your music actually gets there then people hear about it they start listening to it your your album start making mm-hmm. the rounds then people are like oh there's a scene in india there are bands in india <laughs> let's check them out then you know they they start getting in, they start getting in touch and then vice versa and a network starts forming that okay. way okay and then it starts building over time organically that's how that's how it was done before the internet came in right but then once the internet came in you you could literally contact anybody Anyone, at yeah. the click of a button so I would say uh, we were de- the scene was developing organically in India like slowly as it should have been but the internet came in at a time when the scene was developing organically and then suddenly it just took off you know it okay. was, the jump was too quick I mean to suddenly adapt to something new you say yeah you know because until a certain point uh, the only way you could listen to music metal music in India was you actually go out and buy the cassette or buy the CD from a record store Uh-huh. like it was back in the day but then all of a sudden the internet comes in and everyone's downloading music <laughs> right <laughs> so oh, this was then yeah. but now the case is different of course yeah, now, it's, now it's all streaming <laughs> yeah so you need things so that's why you know places like europe and all they still have a very strong metal culture because the metal the culture itself is built on supporting the bands you you love you buy their albums you buy their merch you buy all the stuff you that kind of support really helps the band not not streaming not streaming because you don't really get anything from streaming especially when you're in india and when the yeah. <laughs> certain stream is not from exactly, india exactly yeah so you know that kind of culture of supporting a band uh, you know by buying their stuff it was growing slowly in india uh, because you had no choice you had to do it if you wanted the music mm-hmm. or, but then as suddenly the internet came in and everyone just stopped buying stuff yeah. because hey i can get it for free free <laughs> <laughs> so and that unfortunately continued till today because agreed there was lime wire then yeah. and uh, also to a point today i know some of the artists that we're trying to work with and everything that they also are in in that you know i wouldn't say in angst but they are in that uh, method of trying to you know bring something new out into the scene where they want people who listen to music take a piece of the music and not just yeah. you know be able to stream yeah. but on that note is cryptos on any of the streaming platforms we are i mean uh, that's unfortunately the way the world <laughs> works but that's actually a label requirement yeah yeah because uh, they they decide where the music goes and streams and stuff that but we are very particular about uh, albums you know physical albums mm-hmm. we make vinyl so, i mean the label makes vinyl series whatever tips the whatever the f- yeah the waste that's do. that's our main uh, source of uh, i would say income mm-hmm. uh, from music people still buy our stuff like abroad uh, most of our most of the people who listen to our music are from the old from the old days yeah, yeah. yeah. they they still they are still off that mindset just like we are you know we still buy music mm. and we still buy vinyls and CDs oh, really? yeah but i'm sure that, that's the thing with the old school guys yeah. so like today uh, buying a vinyl player buying vinyls yeah, become like yeah. a I wouldn't want to call it like a fad but it's of the it's become like it's one thing picked up it, again yeah. it's like a flex thing of yeah, late yeah, right yeah, yeah. but there are some people who've been doing it for, for ages, ages. Yeah. and I know DJ Ivan told me once that he has about 4000 odd vinyls in his place and I'm sure you also have a yeah, great collection yeah, of your own yeah uh, Agitas Rohit he has a huge collection okay <laughs> and you know bass player Ganesh he has a massive vinyl collection and stuff man uh, just just this is such a great talk man like he's running <laughs> back in time of so many things and this this is the best part about you know meeting musicians from back in the day because you kind of go back not just in terms of music but this is like a time machine in its yeah. own who said you can't go back in time yeah, you have conversations <laughs> like this exactly. and nolan's so good to have you 
But I'm not going to take too much time of you. So okay. quickly tell us what's happening on the 24th of September. Uh, we, we com- uh, strangely enough, we actually started the band around this exact time. Okay. Like in September 1998. I can't remember the exact date. Okay. But it was around this time and it just so happens that you know, we we managed to pull off a gig, a 25th anniversary gig, right on schedule, you know, uh-huh. uh, to complete 25 years. And uh, this will actually be uh, Ganesh's last gig with us. Okay. Uh, uh, because he's got other commitments and stuff. So he won't be able to, you know, commit to the band uh-huh. uh, full time. So it's all come full circle, I would say. 25 years ago, we started the band 25 you years You and Ganesh later, together. Yeah, 25 years later, we are going to, you know, end it on, I mean... His role, at least, in the band is going to end on... on I on mean, uh, mine's are kind of getting much because I know <laughs> uh, when you started the band, it was you and Ganesh. Yeah. Then you had your two other band members who left yeah, midway yeah, because, yeah. Of other, because of yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Every band goes to that. You put a band, a uh, couple of members together, back and forth. You went yeah. around. And then you had Tiwari and uh, yeah. Ryan, Ryan yeah. for the longest time, yeah. along with Ganesh and you. Yeah. And you even took up uh, being the vocalist. Yeah. All they didn't start off as yeah. a vocalist. Yeah. And again, now it comes to a point where the two people who started the band, yeah. one of them says, going to go, that is really hard. I, I, I really don't know what to say, man. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, we are, that's a cool thing. You know? We are still like super best friends and things like that. So uh, it's just life. It, it happens. And he actually hasn't really been playing full time with the band for quite some time. So it's always been an on and off thing. So now it's just time... We kind of moved on completely, and uh, we thought this would be the right, uh, right time to do it. So, uh, for those of you who are watching, this is uh, Cryptos' twenty fifth anniversary. Uh, I don't know, man. I've, this is like emotional gig as well. Uh, Ganesh is not going to be a part of the band post this gig. Uh, I, I know. Can you do this, man? Like this is this is so not, <laughs> this this is so emotional for a lot of Cryptos fans as well. In in terms like you know after twenty five years. You know what the band's been through, and then suddenly you see okay, the one of the main heads like you know parting ways. It it is something you can't miss, and it's hard to find bands that stick around for twenty five years. And these guys have done that and done that really, really well. So twenty fourth of September at Fandom, Gilly's Fandom, Koramangla. Just yeah. correcting that because there's many fandoms of you. <laughs> yeah, actually. <that's sweet. laughs> But Nolan, thank you so much, and uh, we're hoping to you know get your music on and start playing them out. And I only wish you guys the best, Kryptos, you. Ganesh, you, every single member of the band, and we're going to be there on the twenty fourth of September awesome. at Fandom uh, to, of course, uh, bring your horns out and putting our metal heads out there to rock it out. Awesome, thanks a lot. And I know you guys will rock it out too hard. Yeah, yeah, we'll have some fun on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, man. Thanks Absolute lot, pleasure. Man. Thanks so much. Yeah. Cheers.